watching. So for the folks at home, um, they'll be able to see this recording and see what we're up to here. Uh, so today is the, the 5th of September. And this is our, what, um, fifth class? Yeah, except we had to skip one because I was in a uh, car wreck last week, which, uh, and I'm, I'm better, it's okay. It's not, wasn't my fault. And the other guys are right too. So um, but anyway, so um, on to business. If you don't have GIMP, I've got this on the screen right now. If you don't have the um, uh, image manipulation program, GNU image manipulation program. Um, and GNU, GNU is just a kind of um, open source Mozilla foundation. There's a, there's a lot of the stuff that you run across. They want people to be able to use the internet without a lot of restrictions. That's the ideal. There are foundations that work on this, uh, and it's kind of an accident of technology, but uh, it is something that people who believe in you know, freedom of expression wanted everybody to have. And that happens at the international level. It happens at national levels. And tell you more about that uh, later. So go ahead and download uh, GIMP and, and unwrap it. And let's do, um, hang on, go to, yeah, let's go ahead and do the um, uh, attendance for today. And I just sometimes do this because um, I'm supposed to, and sometimes I do this because it's helpful to get to know you guys and get to know your names. Okay, so here we are. I didn't do that on August 29th, of course, because that was the day after the accident. But okay, so um, uh, Jaheem is here. Andrew Chambers. Hiya. Uh, Kirsten Davis. Hey there. Um, Jessica Groft. Hi, Jessica. Um, Jacob Hurd, um, Elizabeth Jeans. Are you, you're Elizabeth. Okay, thanks. Uh, Tyson. Awesome. Hang on, let me just finish this. I, I can only do one thing at once because I'm also chewing gum, right? Uh, Israel. Uh, hi, Israel. Blake Miller. Hi, Blake. Sam. Samuel. Uh, Owen Saunders. Owen. Jackson Tull. Let's see, Ibu. Saki. Two. Okay. And, uh, Gabrielle Zawadzki. Great. Okay, great. It's so good to see you guys. First question. Um, you mean a power cord? Yeah, I do. I do, actually. Be sure and remember this at the end of the class, though. Okay. You mean this part right here? Yeah, okay. And you've got the rest of the cord there. Okay, good. Uh, so here on our um, D2L page, there's a schedule, okay? And you know, what's due. And I wanted to point out that, that the, the um, your due dates are not locked in concrete. And if you miss a due date, you've got at least a week. Um, and also that if you, turn something in and you didn't get the grade you wanted and I and I give you a reason for, well, that's because you didn't yada yada, right? And you go ahead and fix that, then you can improve your grade. So that's the way we're gonna operate the class, okay? Um, we're, this is really kind of one of those skills classes where the interest on your part is really the driving factor, I think. So this is the basic stuff that you need to succeed in media. It's the, or, or in computing. Um, it's not programming, but it's using applications that will get audio, video, uh, text, PDFs, 
uh, and uh, web structures out there online. It's, I think it's a really important and needed skill, but they're, they tend to be rather basic skills. You know, these are not real high level skills. It's not calculus too, but at the same time, if you don't get walked through a lot of this stuff, it's a bit of a struggle to learn it on your own. So that's why we have the class to kind of accelerate this so that you can use these techniques in your higher level classes, uh, advertising, um, media production, journalism, public relations, those kinds of things. When you have to do campaigns, when you've got somebody saying, here are the outlines, give us a sample campaign. And you know, oh, well, I'm gonna have to use uh, InDesign. I'm gonna have to use um, GIMP and other things like that. So that's the reason for the class. Um, so far, just about everybody has, um, uh, you know, followed the, you know, our schedule here, which is um, there's a, a quiz that's that's due uh, today, but you can, you don't have to do that today. Um, then before that in the calendar, um, we had a couple of things that were also due, including, you know what, this is going to be hard to go back from. See, it doesn't let you go back. <laughs> I don't like D2L very much. That's why um, I like to switch over to um, a, uh, where'd it go? Okay, so so this is our digital imaging. This is our textbook in effect. And, and the website is revolutionsincommunication.com slash viscom, V-I-S-C-O-M-M, -M, as in visual communication. And that's what it looks like. Now it's linked from the D2L side, of course. Um, what we've done so far is we've we've gone through, you guys have read through ABC here, and you've got, mostly you've gotten the portfolio pages done. Some of you have gone on to do the pages and posts, right? So let's take a quick look at some of those. Okay, so here is a brand new one. And this was, okay, this is still a blue screen. That needs to be published. Kirsten Davis, you're here, aren't you? Wait, I thought so. Yes. Okay. So, do you know um, one way to get over this is to look for, you, have you confirmed your email? So, look in your email, it should have come from wordpress.com, and you have to click on it and say, yes, that's me. Then the next thing is when you go to publish your page, there's a, a button in the upper right hand corner of your site when you're on the um, um, you know, your, your dashboard, your background, you know, uh, and, and it'll say publish this site. You should be able to find that somewhere. And it varies from person to person and theme to theme and all that stuff. But that's what you're looking for to get past the blue screen here. Okay. So those, those two things, and that, that should do it for you. Um, who was it? Oh, Elizabeth Jeans. Yeah. Um, just got hers published and um, put in a whole bunch of interesting pictures. You know, they this is like absolutely terrifying. Oh, no wonder. I was thinking, holy cow, where did these come from? Um, so where do you where's where do you work in a haunted house? Terror Manor. Where's that? Really? I know, a, you know what? The I know some Tartan uh, reporters who will want to interview you about St. Albans and about working in Terror Manor. This one in particular is awful. That's really, that's really scary. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. But uh, um, when I click through, I don't know, nothing is happening. I mean, obviously all these photos are live. But when I click through, it doesn't take us anywhere. So it looks like they're live, but you don't have an actual URL behind them is the one I wanted to, to tell you about. So I'll show you how that should look when you, when you go to this page. For example, let's say I was going to edit this page. And I want to point out somebody to you. This is Beatrice Ward. And she was very active in typography about 80 to 90 years ago. And she wrote uh, The Crystal Goblet, which I think I mentioned last time, and also um, This is a Printing Office, which just recently comes up in a movie uh, and book uh, called um, 
uh, something about reading the news. Um, what was that movie? Anyway, uh, it, it, you know, uh, the this is a printing office is like so basically it's just a quick little poem. Crossroads of civilization, refuge of the arts. Stand, you're standing on sacred ground. This is a printing office. She's really worth getting to know. And there's, you know, she didn't write a whole lot, but I wanted to make sure that you had this idea of, you know, who was behind some of the design thinking that we'll be also talking about. So it's not just here's the technique for the class. It's also here are some of the ways that people think about design um, or costumery for that matter. Um, so let's take a look at this page. If I'm going to edit this page, one of the first things you see in editing a page is that you can place a photo and you can place text and you can also format the text. And then the text or the photo can also have links. So there's really three main things a web page can do. It can have text, it can have images, and it can have links. And the images can have links and so can the text. Okay, um, so let's take a look at what that looks like behind the scenes. Now this says text, but what we're really looking at is basic HTML code, okay? And in order to make Beatrice click through, here's the code for this. And it's not that complicated. I'm not gonna go into it in detail, but yeah, I think I might just take a, just open it up and give you a better look at what this is supposed to look like. And let me do, let me do this. Give you a brand new one here. Actually, I'd rather do this in Word, in uh, Microsoft Word. There we go. If I can make it really big and control the, Okay, so I'm going to change this over to Microsoft Word just so that you can get a better view of how this is supposed to look and, and how it breaks down. And, and what you would find when you're trying to edit your, um, your some of the details of your page. So first of all, there is a... Um, uh, uh, this this caption is generated automatically, this caption information. Secondly, and this is the important thing right here, um, is this is the A function, the very first and most important function to create a web link. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll just, I'll uh, do that. So now when you're looking at HTML code, and I'm just, this is going to be a quick refresher. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to remember all this stuff, but just there's two things you have to remember. First of all, it starts and st stops with carrots. So it's a, um, a left facing carrot to start everything. So it kind of encompasses it, right? And it, it's a right facing carrot to end, end your command. This is an open space. So basically you're giving it an A command, which is the link command, because it's the main function, right? And then you type in href equals, and then the, the big you know link right there, close off those quotes and close that off. Now you still have to put something in right here where I'm typing these X's, right? And then what you do is you close it off. So you end the A. So this would be a good text link. And those X's would be the live part. Does that make sense? Well, instead of the X's, what we've done here is we've inserted the photo. So the image, and that's the other second thing you can do, image, and again, space. So notice right here, under after IMG, there's a space. That's a really important thing. So the blanks are important. So A, space, href image, space, source, and then there's a lot of detail. Um, and then you end up with um, the image and the link terminated by this, this uh, slash A. So that's the terminating command. Now, if I didn't have the image in there, I would just have some text and it would work fine too. You can have text and image uh, inside the AHREF. Now, I just point that out to you guys because 
when I go back and look at this stuff and all your links on this page and everything, I oftentimes have to go fix something. And so if I'm, you know, fixing the link to, let's say, Beatrice Ward's picture, and I want to click through to her, you know, Wikipedia page, oftentimes, instead of just the visual link here, which can be, which can be looked at here with the this, guys, if you just click on your pictures, right, you can click on the edit command. So that's this right here, the little pencil. Also notice I've got this thing um, aligned to the right so that however the page comes out, the photo is aligned to the right and all the text is aligned to the left. And that makes the page less messy. It's just a cleaner kind of a, of a design here. Okay, so I, we'll go over this again, but basically I did most of this in the WordPress um, visual uh, format, but I had to go back in text and fix a couple of things. And you may have to do that too from time to time. All right, so, um, that's, so that might help for turning those uh, amazingly scary photos into... Where'd they go? Actually, you know what? It doesn't want to go back necessarily. Okay. Well, so you've got a picture here. Go to the um, the pencil, the edit pencil. And if you click on the pencil, you get a dialog box that looks like this. And here's something called the custom URL. We're still in the visual side now. I wanted to show you that there was a useful text editing, HTML editing sign. But on the visual side, you can go to custom URL or image URL. So what would happen if I went to image URL? Do you think? If that's the link. So I've got an image that's showing up. It's, it's the right format. It's a JPEG or a ping. And uh, I'm linking it to the image itself. So what happens when I do that, do you suppose? Uh, but it looks similar to it. Really? So when you load up a photo and you want to edit your photo, it doesn't have it doesn't have a way to put in a URL. Huh. This is it is a little bit over the map. This is not a big surprise, but I'll we'll have to look at that. So that's one of those things. This is why we usually break at 1030. And if you stay after class, we'll take care of that. Okay. Um so I, you know, if if I put this on image URL, what happens is I click on the image and it comes up much bigger. So I can just see the image closer. That's what I was looking for with the uh, scary pictures, right? Um, but Custom URL, I'm going to leave that in there, and I'll just go ahead and update it. So um, that's part of how we put pictures into um, our web pages. And one of the questions is, well, what kind of pictures are you supposed to put into your web pages? Once you've got a web page, you know, what kind of pictures are you supposed to have there? And that's why we have the, these, these sites. That's um, the reason for the sites is that we're going to upload all 15 of these uh, exercises. That's how you turn them in. You put them on your web page. You don't send them to me via, via email. You, you turn them in by putting them on your pages. And then I'll look at your pages and say, oh, they, uh, they did you know, one, two, four, seven, and nine. Are you having problems with three? You know, And that's, that's how we'll, we'll do that. And so you get used to not only doing the, the image editing with GIMP or Photoshop, but also using the web to load your photos up and dealing with the different kinds of problems that you have with that. Okay, so um, let's see. Next thing is um, we will be looking at pages and posts as we go along. It's really easy just to create them and then how to upload them. So that's what this first part digital media terminology and building a CMS portfolio is all about. Um, I haven't really had a chance to sort of walk you through this. Um, and let me just mention that we are um, 
learning. Um, these are content management systems. WordPress is one of a dozen different content management systems that we're learning. And a content management system has a database and an active, uh, an active program that pulls from the database and then displays out on the website. So the database means that you can have one photo and you can show it 10 different times and it's still the same photo. So you can have 10 different web pages using the same photo or logo or something, and you, you only have to store it once. So essentially in the old days of the World Wide Web, you had to recreate every page from scratch. These days with a dynamic web, this is web 2.0 that we're learning here, content management systems, uh, you, we have separated the container from the content. So the content is what you create and then you can change around your container. This is like the themes we're talking about. So you can put stuff in and say, gosh, I, I wish I had a different theme. That's not quite working for me. Change your theme and you don't lose any of your content at all. It's still there in the database. So you may have to use the program to have it redisplayed somehow, but um, that's that's what we do. Now, the program is the, is the interface. It's the dashboard. But you're really using something called, PH, called PHP, also known as Python. It's pretty serious programming. And on top of that, there's something called cascading style sheets. And associated with that is something called JavaScript. So those are the scripting um, applications you would use on top of the programming. And then uh, on top of that, you've got your dashboard interface for the content management system. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, really, if you never struggled with the old World Wide Web pages, but it's a lot better, believe me. Uh, and uh, it's, it's easy to figure out. A learning management system, an, an LMS, is like D2L. But D2L is like 10% of universities use D2L. Mostly they use either Blackboard or um, uh, Moodle, which is free and open source. Open source means that there's lots of people fixing the bugs, like computer science students. This is typically what they do. But at the same time, um, it can be a little bit uh, wonky. Things can go wrong with Moodle. But heck, things go wrong with with D2L all the time. D2L is crufty. It's difficult to use. We call it crufty. That's the that's the hacker's word for it. Anybody ever hear that word before? No? Okay. Um, these days, there's we we used to use HTTP. So when you get to that, you know, web instruction, what's that address? HTTP is the old one, hypertext transfer protocol. These days we use HTTPS, which means the same thing, but it's secure, S for secure. And in order to get a secure function, you have to buy a, cert a secure certificate. Now you can tell that a website has that because um, it, you can see that it's got a little lock right up here next to the, um, to the tag. Now you guys have this with your sites too, because wordpress.com has a secure certificate. And so, but when you go out into uh, and and create new pages pro for professional use, whether you're a photographer or whether you're a writer and you're looking for work in media or if you're doing anything else for somebody else, um, you'll want to buy a certificate. A lot of browsers now completely reject the regular old HTTP or they'll give you a big warning, you know, look out, the site is not secure. Um, I'm not, you know, you, we could go into the details, but um, HTML, which is kind of associated with this, this is hypertext markup language. That's what we were just looking at on, you know, uh, with these uh, ahref commands. So it's a system that uses carrots to set off commands for links, images, and video references. You don't have to use that system, but you should know it's behind the scenes. And sometimes, like if you've got a really big extensive website like I do, I've got like about 2000 links to manage. Sometimes the links get corrupted and you have to go in and look at why that's happened. And it's nobody's fault. It's just that this, this is um, one of those systems that are, uh, you know, they don't have to be fail safe. They can fail. And that's part of the, of the 
reason for it. World Wide Web, of course, is, is this protocol invented by Tim Berners-Lee around 1989, 1992. Um, other things in CMS WordPress, uh, the dashboard is what you see after you log in. Your appearance is controlled by themes. Um, don't pay for anything. Your appearance is controlled by customizing. You use pages and posts. There's a media library where you upload all your pictures to. And there are plugins that we'll talk about when we get to things like security issues and, and other things too. So we're gonna not go into all the details of wordpress.com right now. We're gonna be using it and those details will come up as we use them. So you basically, you guys are in a, in a safe space relative to all this. Um, the imaging applications, there's really a couple that are pretty good. Adobe Photoshop is great. It's the standard. GIMP is good. There's a Google Photo Editor that's also free. I don't like it. I don't really use it. Um, and then there's something called Photo, um, uh, let's see, Photopea, which I don't think I've got on here. But it's, it's like Photoshop only... It's a very responsive, if you're in a, in a high-speed area, if you've got high-speed internet connection, Photopea works very well like Photoshop. Um, hmm? With Photopea? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you know how to use Photopea, then you know how to use Photoshop. It's the same thing, only it comes with ads, right? And has, has your lag with it. <laughs> I know. Well, that's the price you pay for a free version of essentially Photoshop. Yeah. 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 That's. Yeah, that's the thing because it's it's um. Yeah, I bet it's not really compressing either. So if it, if it compressed, it would be um, it would be an easier exchange. But the high pixel count that you just mentioned is kind of the point of imaging. We want to avoid a high pixel count if we're going to be sending stuff back and forth on the web. So that very first exercise, and I just wanted to say, okay, so there's also video, uh, audio and video streaming, and the great audio application is that's like. Uh, GIMP is Audacity. So that's listed here too. Okay. And there's some video editing stuff here. DaVinci Resolve is about the best you're going to get for more or less free and some animation stuff here too. So this is the, the things that we're going to be working with and on. I think everybody's done the CMS portfolio. So that's one A, B, and C. And we're on to build the portfolio create a free WordPress site and also start making those pages and posts and also customize your site. So design and customize your site with title and header and things like that. So we, we go on to um, find out more about pixels and resolution and file formats and that kind of thing. So just very briefly, uh, your pixel resolution can be... Um, is is really the the measure your bit depth is really the measure of the quality of your image and you guys all remember sort of one bit is um is this what's called a bitmap it's either on or off and if you look at this really closely and by the way that's that's the what you do if you're if you've set your image link to the image itself this is what happens you click on it and everything else goes away and it gets bigger like this okay so that's what you wanted to do. I think Elizabeth. Um, so this is a bitmap and you get either, you know, on or off. This is eight bits. Remember good old eight bit Super Mario, 16 bit, remember good old Link, right? And these days we are using 32 bit. Uh, so that means we've got 16, we've got 16 million colors. Here's a, here's a 24 bit three channel JPEG. There's a fourth channel that is also operating when you when you use a JPEG, and there are, um, we'll we'll get to more detail about that. But you end up you see how much better that picture is compared to 
this picture, which only has 256 colors and it's posterized, what we call, you know, there's just a, a very few um, nice colors there. Uh, and, and it gives you that kind of, um, you can kind of zoom in and, and see how, um, how 256 colors looks like Mario, okay? So now that we kind of have some idea about that and we know about image editors, let's just mention file formats real quick. Um, there's a there's a new one here that is uh, the H, um, I think it's HMEC or something, that we're using with um, HEIC, I'm sorry, that we're using with Apple right now. So if you take a picture and then you upload it onto your computer, you might find you've got HEIC. It's very, very much like PNG. So uh, you, when you make a, um, a document in Photoshop or in uh, GIMP, you're gonna end up with something that's in what we call native format. That is, you know, it'll only open in Photoshop or it'll only open in GIMP. Photoshop, the suffix is P, uh, um, PSD. GIMP, the suffix is XCF. Okay. Um, and then you might export that to a JPEG or to a, an SVG or a, or a ping, PNG. So PNGs really are preferred for the web now because they're more secure. But if you were going to print it, it would be a TIFF. Now these, you don't have to memorize all this right off the bat. You, you need to be able to find a place that you can refer to them. What you need is a JPEG or a ping. That's all you need to remember here. That's the format that's gonna show up on the web. Okay, and then um, of course, what we wanna do is we wanna master these different image editors. And also we wanna remember how to upload an image. So not sure why it looks like some of these images, let me just edit this page real quick. I'll show you. Did you guys see what the problem was with this page? <gasps> yeah, you know what? I need to, first of all, let me go back. I'm not sure everybody could see this, but okay. So now we we're back on the right page. How to format and upload an image. So this these images should be showing. So I'm gonna, I don't know why they're showing. I'm gonna go back and edit the page and see what it looks like when I'm editing the page. These are, are sort of empty holes right here. Now, it's not the kind of problem I can fix by just doing a regular edit. Um, this should be fine. Yeah, I can't do this by edit because it's really in the command structure. So by a visual edit. So I'm gonna have to go into the text edit and in the text edit, there is a place right here where I simply have to put in, this is a, a, a bit of corruption that happens with this particular thing. And I have to put in a, um, a slash, just one little character. And let's take a look and view the page right now. No, that should have worked. Let's go back and edit the page. WP. Yeah, there's another one right here. So there you can see that one of them is actually showing up. Let's go back and do, look at the other text. Page. And this is why you would want to learn a little bit of HTML. There it is. Just that one little thing, just one little character. So I should be able to see the images on this page now. Uh-huh. So not all of them, but this one for sure. 
and I'll go back and look at the other ones too. I sometimes I just it takes a little concentration. So this is what you want to see with your image size. You want to change from 12 to 112 megabytes to 160k, that sort of thing. And what you're going to do is you're going to resize the dimensions or the resolution. The appropriate resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Your dimension should be five by six, eight by 10, something like that. If your dimensions are um, 40 inches wide, that's way too big, okay? And you, you could, you know, you know that that's not gonna fit on the screen. It really should be five by six. Um, so that's one part of that. And image too large would be, uh, well, anyway. So that's what you want to do, and that's why why we're doing that. So we're going to go through that and look at optimizing and uploading an image right now. So let's say this is from the Library of Congress. And if you go to this website at the Library of Congress, as I just did, one of the things you see is that it'll give you a low-res photo. That's fine. Um, you don't want the... Um, well, this is a 600K or a 0 0.6 megabyte uh, photo. That's fine too. See how fast it came through, right? Um, or here is a 140K, uh, that comes through really quickly too. But if I click on this TIFF 38.4, um, download it to my desktop and then upload it to my WordPress page, it's gonna be way too big and it's gonna be the wrong format. So that's why we have these image editors. So I will go ahead and, and do that. It's not my favorite picture, but actually, where is my favorite picture? Um, well, we'll just go ahead and use this. That's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. Um, to my desktop, which is an easy place for me to find. It is a uh, it is a 38 megabyte um, picture. And I'm gonna open up GIMP and change the way that it, uh, change its size. So come on, GIMP. Nope, come on. This is just gonna take a second. So GIMP looks like this funny creature with the, um, okay. And, and what we'll do is we'll remember this time to go ahead and change our screen. So now we're looking at the, um, GIMP, we're sharing the GIMP photo screen. And I'm gonna make this uh, full size so everybody can see it. So first thing is there's a menu at the top and we're gonna to go to file open and we're gonna open that thing I just downloaded on my desktop. And it was something like master, something is 40 megabytes, it's huge. And I'm gonna convert it. And there it is, you can, you can see right there that I've taken this really large picture from the Library of Congress. It's public domain because it's really old. Anything that was um, published before 1928, I think it's I think it's 27 now. It'll be 28 in January. Anything published before 1928 is outside of copyright, so you're free to use it any way you want to. Anything published by the government is free of copyright, so it, theoretically it belongs to the people. So all those wonderful NASA space photos and things, those are yours. You paid for those when you paid taxes. Uh, and, and lots of other things that are government reports, images, fish and wildlife has some wonderful, you know, uh, visual images. So if you're designing websites for people, don't forget, you've got that resource, the public domain stuff from the government and stuff that's older. And then also there's a new thing called Creative Commons licensing. As long as you have attribution and you're not making a profit from using the image, you're free to use it for educational reasons. So that's the, mostly the stuff you would find on Wikipedia. Now let's take this picture and make it small enough and then we'll upload it to the web, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is in GIMP, we're gonna go to image and then image size uh, or, or actually scale image. And 
it's hard to see this right now. I know you guys at the audience at home is, is only seeing the picture, but there's a dialogue box that comes up when you go to the top menu and pull down to scale image. So when you do that, you get a dialogue box and here in the dialogue box, um, I can specify uh, width and height and I can specify, first of all, how I'm gonna measure that. So instead of pixels, I'm gonna do it in inches because it makes more sense to me. Well, it says it's only pretty much four by four, 3.8 by 3.4 inches. But look at the resolution here. This is a thousand pixels per inch. Don't know if you can see this up close, but you could also follow along with this on your GIMP application right now. So we're gonna change a thousand to 72. 72 pixels per inch is what we want. And I'm not going to, you know, go through all the, the, there we go. Okay, so at 72 pixels per inch, it instantly converted the image size to 54 inches wide. That's huge. We don't want that. We want about maybe five inches wide. So let's go ahead and make this, here we go, about five inches wide. And since it's linked right here, it's going to be five by four and a half. Again, 72 inches. It's, what it says here is 72.000. We're going to go ahead and scale it and look, it made it look much smaller. So now we can use the zoom tool and go back in and make it larger. Now the zoom tool will, will show you that the image is highly pixelated at this point. See, there's a dog, right? There's the, there's the poor dog and all you see is like pixel dog. If I was to undo that, um, let's see, undo scale image. And if we were to zoom in again, see there, it's a little blurry because that's the quality of the photo, but you can certainly see it's a dog and you can certainly see that there's no pixelation there, right? Does that make sense everybody? The bigger images have lots more pixels jammed in. The smaller images are the ones you want to use for the web. Um, and I'll go ahead and redo the scale image. And now we'll, this will be fine for the web. It's a little, it's got a little bit of the jaggies, but I don't care. Um, there are other things we're going to want to learn to do with these photos. Notice how this is kind of gray. It's got a kind of a gray wash all over it. We're going to learn to change the exposure and the um, the brightness and contrast and things like that. But we're not going to do that today. What we're going to do today is we're going to do uh, we're going to export this as a PNG, not as a TIFF. So um, we'll just do donkeycart.png. Donkey.png. Now in GIMP, all you have to do is, is make sure you get it accurate, but put in either JPEG or ping, dot JPEG, dot ping at the end, the suffix, and it will export it in that style. Um, and you can go ahead and hit export just like that. Now, uh, at this point, what we want to do is we want to upload it and I have a kind of a demo website that you guys have seen. We'll go over to uh, create a brand new um, post. And this will just uh, upload donkey cart to the post. So donkey, it's our headline. And here we're going to click on the um, add block and we're gonna click on image. So now I can upload an image from my website. Remember, we just put that on my, uh, and look at the size here, it is 230 kilobytes, right? So I just put that on my desktop and I'm gonna open it and it loads it right up, there it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and publish it. And now on my web page, this should be 
you know, sometimes you have to hit the but the publish button twice, and then you get this confirmation like hurrah, hurrah, you okay. have published. Um, so now I'm going to go back to my demo site. Come on, demo site. Back to dashboard. Here we go. All right. Now, for those of you who are really sharp, why is this older post on top of the one I just did? So you can see I've got donkey here, right? There it is, and and um, there's my there's my picture, and we'll go back and we'll edit that in a second. But first of all, I just wanted to show you that I did actually successful get it successfully get it into my blog site, right? So um, I I certainly would not have been able to upload that if it was a 38 megabyte TIFF. I could only load a JPEG or a PNG, um, and only if it was about under, uh, let's say, a megabyte. But of course, it doesn't have the same uh, responsiveness that some of these other uh, pictures do. Actually, none of them do. Okay, so let's let's go back. So anybody have any idea why the printer's holiday, August 24th, is on top of the success, September 5th blog post? Yeah. Exactly. So this one right here, I've I've set um, to be sticky. Okay, stick to the top of the blog, and I can take that off and update it. And of course, exactly what you expect happens. Happens. There's donkey right at the top, and then there's the printer's holiday, August twenty fourth. So. See how that works. So these stack, but you can also stick stuff to the top, maybe a welcome or something like that. It'll stick to the top there. I'm going to go back and edit this. And, and the little edit button is underneath when you're logged in. And let's just take a quick look at the links that this thing would uh, would have. So it might be, I think it's under no, advanced behaviors. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, it's supposed to give me add caption, insert. Yeah, there we go, insert link. And I can link to the media file. So this is, here you go. This is what we're looking at, Elizabeth. Okay, you, were you doing this? Yeah, so if I update this, so I've just, I've just linked the media file here, hopefully. All right, let's see if it uh, actually worked. Yep, sure enough. And by linking the media file, it just go just opens up the media file on one page. All right, well, we'll see if yours is fixed. Uh, let me just go to, actually. I need to add. Let me get my. Uh... For those of you at home watching and wondering what's going on, not much. We're just, you know, here we go. There's the viscom link. And we'll go ahead and look at the viscom link here. So, what we've just shown, first of all, is that the, uh, the donkey link worked fine. So that's correct. So the donkey link worked fine here. Right. And obviously, since it was done September 5th, it's at the top of my um, uh, my blogs. And um, it is responsive. So that's what happens when you have the media file as the main link. Um, the other thing is that uh, let's just see if under student portfolios, um, Elizabeth Jean's very scary pictures are going to come up now, like this one. <gasps> yes. Yeah, it works. 
See, so that's what you do is you simply make your um, your picture. Here we go. Come on. You simply make your picture. There we go. All right. So when you edit your picture, right, and you place it. So donkey, I'll just put this in September fifth. Right. And here you've clicked on the picture. There's a link function right here, edit link. And so you can edit as the link as a media file, or you can send it to a different page or paste in a URL. So it can click through to a different page, or it can be the media file itself. And it's simply, all you do is click on the file that you've uploaded, the media file, and that should do it for you. Okay, so that's what I wanted to walk you guys through today. Just get one of those, you know, be able to take a high res photo and make it a low res photo and then upload it to your web page. That's the big lesson for today. Tomorrow or, or Thursday, we're going to go into some more advanced functions with GIMP and Photoshop. But this is kind of just the basic stuff that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. All right. Um, is it time to go? Yeah, it's it's 1030. Anybody who's got individual issues or problems, stick around and we'll talk about them. We got 15 minutes still, but if you've, um, if you're doing okay, if you're on track, then go ahead and take off. See you guys um, Thursday. Good. Thanks for remembering that. Yeah. Let me, let me turn off the recording. All right. Thank you everybody who's been watching.